In most virtual reality devices today, the entire field of view is either completely dedicated to virtual content where the physical world is not visible at all, or some type of hybrid version where we have both VR and augmented reality by using pass-through or waveguides technology as found with the Magic Leap 2. Well, today I'm really excited to introduce you to Magic Leap 2 Dynamic Dimmer. I'm gonna be going through code examples and also a few demos. This technology provides two powerful options for developers today. There's a global dimmer which dims the entire environment to ensure we have clear, solid, in vibrant digital content in bright areas. Think about this as a tint applied to the background under all the virtual content in which you can control its opacity value. There's also a segmented dimmer, which allows applications today to just dim just part of the display with the virtual content. This means a subtle tint or border is applied around the edges of 2D UI content or even 3D content. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the device settings required to enable these features. To make sure that you have the right settings, go into settings and then we're going to go into display. Here's where we're gonna have a variety of different options for display, including brightness, which we can adjust if we wanted to. Also out of brightness, so you can enable it or disable it. Global dimmer, you can also adjust it here manually. We're gonna control that through the app. You can also enable segmented dimming, which is what we're going to need for this video. So make sure that you have that enable. The next thing that is really important though is go into the main menu and make sure that you don't have a mode enabled. Otherwise, what I'm gonna show you is not going to work. Make sure that you have this set to adjust and that's going to allow for dynamic dimming features. All right guys, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna be creating a, a new project. So just go ahead and use 2022.2 or above. In my case is 2022.3. I'm gonna be creating a 3D URP with a project name. Let's go ahead and select the location also the organization and click on create project. Once you click on create project, we're going to be removing the standard assets that come with the URP template. Also remove the main camera and the global volume. We don't need that. Then go ahead and rename the scene to magically dimmer demos. Double click it to open it. And then let's go ahead and go into the package manager. And we're going to be searching here for the asset that we need for magic leap. So just go ahead and search for Magic Leap, this is really cool because this tool allows you to get all the different dependencies. We import it, it's going to tell you what we need. It'll download the SDK, fix all the different settings. So really, really helpful tool. I wish all the different frameworks for XR had it. So now go into the XR plugin manager, make sure that you have the same setting as I have for Magic Leap. So I also brought in my core components, the logger and then singleton, also the singleton persistent. So those are just things that I normally use over and over and over. So go into Magic Leap SDK runtime and then tools. And if you go in here, you're gonna go into prefab, but there's gonna be the extra rake here that we can grab, that we can drag and drop. Once you do that, then let's go ahead and resize here the gizmo because it's too big. Then expand the session origin as well. Then go into the main camera. These are gonna be just some of the different components on the main camera. And this is where the camera is facing. It's just always good to know that. Also the position and the rotation is all based on the eye position rotation. So the next thing, go into the game controller and I want you to pay attention to this model prefab here, which we're going to need. So we're gonna to have to create it. The one that it's under the SDK folder doesn't have all the correct rendering. So because it's using the standard, it doesn't use URP. Okay, so now let's go ahead and associate it now that we have the correct materials. And now that's going to be instantiated. I'm gonna be bringing in a logger as well. This is pretty simple. It's just a canvas with world space that allows me to communicate to it and write to a log from code, which we're gonna be using when we create our code for handling how we change the dimmer. So you can see here some of the settings, also max lines, you can change that if you like to. I'm gonna be putting a link to these in the description so you guys can do download the repo. Now let's go ahead and create a cube and we're just gonna be resizing these to 0.15 on X, Y, and Z. And then just zero out everything just to make sure that we are at the center position, just right next to the camera. And I normally do this so that I know, okay, where the camera is and then where the object is going to go. We can also bring it up a little bit. And then I think it's too small, so bring it to 0.25. 
on all axes. I think that looks a lot better and we can assign a blue material to it just to have something different. So I also change this to 0.2. I like to have rounded type numbers. So I don't like to have the numbers be, you know, just basically a number that it's more of an even number. And then go into and create a new capsule. So it's gonna be another 3D model and then 0.25 all the way across as well. And what we can do, we can copy basically some of the values here, go to copy and then copy values and then we can paste it. That way we can match the cube and then we can just move it a little bit further away from the cube. And I think I'm gonna make this 1.5. I think that looks good to me. And we can assign the green material to it. I just wanna have some different things that we can see when we're looking at it for the dynamic dimmer. Now what I'm gonna do is create a, cam I create a canvas and I'm gonna rename it to UI. We can make it to world space and have some settings in here that I normally use. So we're gonna be positioning this next to the logger. So just make sure that you follow these numbers in here so you can size things correctly. We're gonna have it be a negative number. So it's gonna be rotated. And then this is gonna be the image that we're going to be assigning to the UI. So basically this image is what we're going to have as, you know, as an example, so that we can see how the segmented dimmer looks like. So now I'm gonna be resizing this as well. So it's gonna be the image and then just uncheck right cast in maskable and assign the image that we're going to be using. It's just a cool image that I found online of a doctor with the magic lip two glasses. And then we can just rename it here just so that it makes sense to us. And then we can add another component. This is so that we can interact with it. So I'm gonna do it pretty quickly. All right, so it looks like that collider looks good. Let's go ahead and add a component. It's gonna be the XR Grab Interactable so that we can basically interact with it and then just set the rigid body to is kinematic. That way it doesn't fall with gravity. And then I'm gonna rotate it, negative 51. I think that looks good. And perhaps negative 50 looks better. Okay, so now what we need to do though is I'm gonna go ahead and basically change the force grab option. That way we can keep the objects at the ray position and not attached to our hands or controllers. And then we can make this kinematic on the cube capsule so that we can interact with them. So now it should be ready to build and deploy. Just make sure you connect your device via USB-C and just give your build a name, I'm gonna put it under builds and then just call it test build underscore three in this case, hit save. Let's go ahead and create a brand new script and this is gonna be our dimmer controller. This is where all the logic for the dimmer it's going to basically exist. I'm gonna create a game object as well, assign the script to that object, zero it out, everything, and now we can work on the implementation. Okay, so these are gonna be some of the variables that I'm gonna be using, the magic leap input so that we can capture input, touchpad position so that we can get the position of the touchpad as we're pressing it, and also the bumper so that we can activate segmented dimmer. This is how we get the X value from where we're touching. Also, we normalize the value so we can go from zero to a one, and then I just basically set the global dimmer. Then for the bumper, this is what's going to be activating the segmented dimmer. For now, I have it commented out because I wanna show you this without it, and then we can implement that semantic dimmer. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna be focusing on the segmented dimmer. So just go ahead and create a layer as so, and then go into file build settings, player settings, and then graphics. And this is where we're going to be finding which file, which URP file we need to look at. So in this case, we're gonna be using the high fidelity. That's the one that is associated by default. Go into the render itself. And then on the filter options, we wanna uncheck segmented dimmer for the opaque and also for the transparent layer mask. Then what you need to do is we're gonna be adding a render feature. It's gonna be a segmented dimmer and then go into settings and then just make sure that segmented dimmer is set to the layer mask. 
Once we do that, we can create another component. I'm going to be creating a 3D model. It's going to be a cylinder. I'm also going to be copying some of the values from the capsule and assigning those to the cylinder. That way, everything is positioned correctly. And then I'm just going to go ahead and move it on the Z axis a little bit towards the camera. And then we can just go ahead and also change the value of Z a little bit so that we don't have too many decimals. And then if you go under, under materials, we can go ahead and just change that to be green. We can move it up. And then, so we're going to have multiple 3D objects also in the scene. I'm going to duplicate it as well because I want to add the dimmer. And this is going to be a duplicate of itself. And, but it's going to have a different material. It's going to be basically what's going to designate that little border, that little edge that we're getting from the segmented dimmer. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller than the original. And then what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and go back into shader here. And then I'm going to set the cast shadows to off and also light probes to off and make sure that the global illumination is turned off. This is just something that they recommend that you do through that documentation. Then go into Magic Leap XR plugin, then also runtime, URP, and you're going to find the shaders in here that we're going to need. So just think of this as a layer that is going to be assigned when this is running on the Magic Leap. I made it a little bit smaller so that it just looks, I think, a lot better. I tested it already, so this size looks a lot better. And then I'm also going to make this interactable, so add an XR Grab interactable to it. And then I think everything looks good so far. So I'm going to do the same thing with the, basically with the UI. I'm going to set it to zero so that we can add a quad and it's a lot easier to, to basically add that. And if you move the quad up, I'm going to also rename this. It's going to be the dimmer underscore URP. So you can also do this with UI. You can also do this with 3D objects. So let's go ahead and resize it a tiny bit here. So you don't want to make it that goes beyond the edges of the original object. That's basically what I found that looks better. If you make it a little bit smaller, maybe like 10% smaller, 5% smaller, and then we can just offset it. Because at the end of the day, this is going to be a very low resolution uh, component border that gets assigned. So it, it won't really stand out too much, but it'll be enough resolution to show you that we're focusing on that specific object. And I'm going to make it negative 51 so that we can change it back to what we had. Then if we go back down to our dimmer controller here, we can just uncomment the segmented dimmer. This is how you activate it and deactivate it. As you can see, Dynamic Dimmer can be very useful. It gives developers full control of the environment without giving up quality, unlike pass-through tech, where quality suffers when lighting conditions are dynamic. Well, let me know what you think about this technology. Are you using it today? Are you thinking about using it in the future? Let me know in the comments. I'm really curious about it. And again, thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you very much, guys.